Right, welcome to Tito the Trodler Part 2 uh, uh, gear review. So, as I said in the first video, uh, if you want to know what wild camping gear to take with you, you've come to the right place. Uh, so, thank you for clicking on the video. Um, it, it, please look at Part 1 and then obviously come and watch Part 2. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully you find this informative. I uh, really love you to subscribe. Um, and join the party please mention it that you've subscribed as well in the comments so so i can thank you personally but yeah without any further ado let's get the second half of this review underway so on to chargers this is uh my charger i bought it uh, about a year ago i had one pre previous to that that i got from um go outdoors but i upgraded to this so uh, this is the biolite external charger it's 20,000 mAh, which gives you about five and a half charges. Quite expensive, it was about uh, 70 quid, um, but at 410 grams, I think it weighed about the same as my cheap one, but gave you double the charging capacity. So um, I really, really like this so far. I've only, only incident I've had once is it's man it went off in my bag once, um, you know, and it drained. And so when I got to camp, I didn't have anything. And that's why I like the Unigear, because without that, I'd have been absolutely up the creek, but yeah, when it when it doesn't switch itself on by accident it's wonderful really really like it right and uh, next one is an absolute must goes on every single camp with me uh, this little uh, sony speaker is just out of this world it worth a lot of money got it at curry's i think we're about 30 40 quid and it's about 250 grams but what a great sound for a little speaker and uh I know I've arrived in camp when, I, when I've when i got my tent set up and I've got all my sleeping system set up and I've got a glass of rouge on the go and um, uh, uh, I've got this with me and it's just uh, uh, brilliant because this is, this is what plays the vibes. So uh, couldn't be without it. Fabulous little bit of kit. And next, uh, don't always use these, I've got to say, but I always take them with me. So a pair of earplugs, because you never know when you might need them. Certainly the other week when it was windy, uh, these were pretty invaluable because it at least allowed me to have all, all, uh, uh, a little bit of sleep. And the other thing that I've got is I've got what I call my uh, my old top cat, which is the old uh, the old mask. So you know, get the mask on and uh, you know keep keep the light out. Uh, definitely works. Definitely definitely helps. Uh, you, you know, just get a bit more sleep, especially in summer when, you know, there's a lot of light. But yeah, I like my mask and my earplugs. Always worth taking them. Right, uh, the next one up is uh, sort of where I got battered into submission on uh, Facebook. You know, when they start advertising, you look at something and then they just keep uh, giving you every week until eventually you buy it. Well, this is one of them. So this is the show insulated mug. Um, and I've even had it uh, all marked with Tito the Troddler. Um, it's got a uh, uh, leak, uh, leak uh, you know, anti-leak lid on, on top of it. Didn't used to have that and it was terrible because you'd knock it over and it'd leak all over your tent. But now I've got this on it, this is the absolute business. And what I will say to you is, is compared to a normal plastic cup uh, or these collapsible ones which I had before, this is just brilliant. It, it, you can put a brew in it and 20 minutes later it's still warm. It's just really, really good, and for it weighs nothing. It weighs absolutely nothing. I just love it to bits. It's brilliant. That's another absolute essential bit of kit. I wouldn't go camping without it. Simple as that. Can't recommend sure enough. Brilliant. Oh, while I was talking about sure, the mug's about two hundred grams as well, and it only costs about thirteen quid, so it's pretty inexpensive as well. So the other thing that I got into and all is when I was sort of going to make food and what have you rather than just take a dehydrated meal. Uh, Shaw got me again because they've got these uh, food containers. So there's a small one which is about 500, uh, 530 mil and then they've got a bigger one which is about 800 mil. So the 530 is what I take if it's just me. The 800 one if it's, I'm taking if there's two of us. And what I'll do with that is I'll put a, a bolognese mix or a stew in there or something like that. And then I'll take some pasta with me and... Um, a boiler pasta. What I am thinking of doing is uh, either in the smaller or the bigger one. I can't quite wait. I might, I might do it in the bigger one. I might actually just make the whole thing up the bolognese uh, or the pasta. I do like penny uh, with the bolognese sauce and just put it all in the big container. All I've got to do and then do is uh, warm it through when I get to camp. So I might give that a bash. But yeah, uh, they don't. They only keep food warm for about three or four hours, so it's not really piping hot when you get to camp. But you can soon warm it through and uh, 
the brilliant and I really really like him and uh, saves a lot of faffing about but giving you a really sort of like proper meal rather than uh, dehydrated so yeah a, a bit of a luxury because obviously they had a bit of weight but still very very good I really like him right so next we have a uh, down jackets and uh, the first one that I've got is my uh, winter one which is an Actorex and it's got I think it's called a Thorium and um, uh, these were quite expensive at about I don't know, 380 quid, something like that, but same again, oh, lucky, I got it uh, from birthday and uh, I think Christmas money, I put put it two together and it, uh, you know, it was really, really good. Uh, um, uh, it was about 500 grams, so quite heavy really, but absolutely fantastic, you know, on a winter wild camp. As soon as I get to camp, get out my uh, wet clothes that I walked, damp clothes that I walked up in, put this on and uh, get my uh, dry base layer on and, and I'm in a completely different place. It's a wonderful, wonderful jacket. And then for summertime, when you don't need that, I've got uh, this one, which is called a uh, Mountain Hardware. Um, I think it's called a uh, Ghost Whisperer, which is a bit of a funny name. Uh, but yeah, Ghost Whisperer. This is a bit obviously lightweight, but works in exactly the same way. Down jacket. Um, I it think it's, it's, it's about uh, um, 250 grams. This, so it's a fair bit light as well. So more packable uh, for summer camping. But both brilliant. So just depending on what conditions uh, determines which one I take with me. But same again, two absolutely fantastic bits of kit. Right, next is uh, some quite expensive uh, bits of clothes and this is my hard shell. So I've got a hard shell jacket um, and I've got some hard, hard shell uh, 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 trousers as well. And they're both Actor X, which I know is an expensive make, but the whole ethos of Actor X is that you buy it and it lasts you an awful long time. So I'm expecting uh, out of uh, this jacket. Same again, absolutely fantastic. Uh, three layer Gore-Tex so in respect is uh, very very uh, um, uh, waterproof um, just brilliant comfortable to wear you don't sweat in it uh, very breathable so uh, uh, an expensive bit of kit um, I mean I think uh, collectively I don't know it could have been about uh, five six hundred pound really so it were very expensive but I think the last jacket that I had before this one hard shell jacket was a mountain equipment one and that lasted me going on for 10 years so when you work it out per year it's not bad value for money it just takes a bit of finding uh, uh, a time but same again it's a uh, another christmas uh, present put together and add a little bit of money in and a uh, bit of birthday money in and you'll get there won't you so uh yeah well a lovely bit of kit right next one quite a serious one this next one right uh this next one is um uh something that's uh, again it's one of these an absolutely invaluable item so when I started running a couple of years ago, which I have started again, by the way, uh, I invested in a couple of pairs of these. Underwear, boxer shorts, absolutely fantastic. I mean, truly, truly fantastic. Uh, not like cotton underpants where, you you know, uh, you, you, the, you, the sweat and uh, you can end up, uh, you know, where the rain up riding up here. These things are absolutely brilliant. They've got like a little bit of sort of like a sort of like rubber liner on the bottom that keeps them in place. But uh yeah, they're just anti-chafe underpants, that's what they are, for want of a better expression. And uh, I absolutely love them, they're absolutely fabulous. I would just wouldn't go wild camping and certainly running without them. So I'd highly, highly recommend them. Uh, the next bit of kit that I wear, I take with me nearly on all my camps, is uh, unless it's summertime and I've got a pair of shorts, is my mountain equipment uh, soft shell trousers. Same again, I must have had these easily 10 years. And they're just absolutely brilliant, uh, water resistant, not waterproof, but you know, they'll dry out pretty quickly if they get wet anyhow. Uh, but yeah, you know, just a wonderful bit of kit. So that I'll, I'll always uh, take my soft shell, that soft shell trousers, uh, I'll go in at any other time other than summer. Um, and they don't weigh a lot, they don't weigh a lot, but uh, yeah, a really, really good bit of kit. Right, next we have a fleece. So I always take a fleece, may normally go up in this. Uh, I've got a, a summer fleece as well, which is a bit thinner, but uh, this one has been everywhere. I mean, this Berghaus, I think it's a 200 weight fleece, so it's, I uh, don't know whether it's polar tech lined or whatever, you. it's got paint on it and all sorts. No, it's mucky, but uh, I love it. I just I love it to bits. I think one of zips went on one of pockets recently, so I might have to, after about 10, 15 years, I might have to invest in a new one, but this has been truly, truly wonderful and really, really warm to wear. So I, I really, really do uh, like this Berghaus. Uh, I don't have a lot of Berghaus gear, but I've got to say, this is fantastic.
Right, not much more to go now. So, uh, boots. Uh, what boots do I take with me? Well, the absolute one that I wear the most on my wild camping uh, trips are these, which are Hoka Kahars. Uh, the Gore-Tex, uh, they're pretty lightweight, they weigh about a kilo, a thousand grams, uh, and they're just brilliant. Uh, they're really comfortable to wear. They're quite warm when you wear, wear them, even, even in winter they're quite warm. Uh, Fibrum sole, really, really good, and really, really, you know, quite light for what, what they do, but pretty reassuring on a, uh, if you're going up high, really, really good. Um, and then in, in summary, if I really want to, I've got a, an old pair of speed goats that I've used for, uh, uh, ultra running and all sorts. I think the first time I did the lap, I did them in these. Uh, probably they've had the better days of these. Uh, but these, uh, the beauty of these is for some of them, they're brilliant because they're, they only weigh about 400 grams. So uh, really, really good. Um, I think they're both about 150 quidish them. And then these, <laughs> these old faithfuls. Now, uh, they're really pretty retired of these. These are my Scarpa SL Active uh, Four Season Boots. I just love these boots. These boots have been everywhere. These boots walked all the way in rights. And in iron sight, that was a mistake because these are heavy, proper, proper heavy. 1.6 kilo, um, uh, but they're made of leather, leather upper, and as long as you treat them well, uh, you know, uh, 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 rubber leather cream into them every time you use them and clean and look after them, which I've done every time, so I love them to bits, they'll pay you back. But the main reason for buying these were is the what known as a B1 boot and they'll take a flexible cramp on. So really these are a winter boot and should only really be used in winter conditions when you really, really need to because they are heavy. And I, when I think that I've tra trailed all around wearing rights and these when I could have gone around in a pair of speed goats, it, uh, I obviously put myself under a lot of stress that I didn't need to. But yeah, all three of them really, really good boots. Uh, recommend any of them. These are expensive. I think they're about 300 quid a pair now, which is uh, quite frankly ridiculous. Right, so last but not least, we're going to talk about socks. So I normally take a combination of socks, but uh, a few years ago, well, say a few years, probably about 10, 15 years ago, um, I wanted to go outdoors and the guy recommended me uh, getting lining socks. And uh, as soon as I got them, I'm not saying I've never had a blister because I've gone obviously on some long walks. So I mean, I still do get blisters, but from minimizing blisters, these are an absolute must. They keep the moisture away from your feet and they really, really do make a difference. So yeah, I normally have a pair of lining socks like that and then I have an, another pair of a, uh, uh, Bridgedales, these are these are smart wool and um, I think these are the extra thick ones so these are my winter socks um, and then I've got a blue pair these are red I've got a blue pair that I like this that are sort of uh, mid-weight that um, I'm on my summer ones really or, or um, uh, like you know early winter autumn sort of uh, socks both absolutely fantastic both work really well together um, can't recommend Bridgedale enough so I think that brings me to the end of uh, this or these videos regarding my camping gear. So I hope you found it informative. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it's meant that I've had something to show you. Uh, I'm hoping to get out next week um, to do a history talk. And then the week after that, I might go on another wild camp if, depending on the weather. I think if it's windy, I'm not going. I've decided that's it after last one. But um, other than that, I'll be out. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I am trying to get up my subscriptions up and they are creeping up. I'm nearly up to 200 now. So uh, it'd be absolutely wonderful if you came and joined uh, the party. But if you do, please put it in the comments that you've subscribed. And then I can thank you personally because what I also want is not just subscribers. I want people that interact. I've got some really, really nice people that comment on a lot of videos. I've got Gary Towers. Trousers. I've got um, um, uh, Chris JB, I've got obviously Boardman, and uh, uh, I've got Mark from YX Board, and one or two others that, uh, you know, comment on a lot of my videos, and I, I thank you all for your, uh, you know, giving your comments and uh, uh, watching me, I really do appreciate it, so until next time, take care, and we'll see you soon.